All right, hello everybody and thanks for joining us here. I'm Greg Luther with the Home Buyer Advocates and we've got some awesome information today. If you've considered buying a home or maybe you've owned a home in the past and you're a little bit nervous about buying your next property, I actually have a specialist on with us here today, Jan Flowers from down in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, Jan, are you here with us? Yes, I'm here. Hey, good to see you here today, and, and I'm excited to address some of these uh, common misconceptions when it comes to buying a home. I mean, I think everybody knows they should own a home, but it is a little scary when you're first looking to buy. So um, I know some of the questions that commonly come up here, uh, no money down financing is finally back for the state of Florida. Can you talk to us a little bit about the no money down financing, and is it really no money down, I guess would be the first question, and how does it work? Actually, it's really exciting, and thanks for asking that. We've got actually two lenders that I'm currently working with, one for conventional no money down loan, so that would be with no mortgage insurance, which is a big savings to any seller, uh, buyer rather, and also um, one that's FHA. So depending on your credit, if you're FHA, then you could go with the lower no money down, or you could get conventional. Um, either one of them are great, and um, I think that's pretty well uh, the most exciting thing that we've come up with lately. So all you really need are closing costs and perhaps a little bit of reserve for your payments, your monthly payments. Yeah, and, and I think the big misconception there is to get no money down, you need perfect financing or, or perfect credit. So, you know, when you look at cars, they always advertise buy this car with no down payment, but you have to have like a 720 credit score or something. That's not the case with mortgages. Can you talk a little bit about that? If they're going with conventional loan, most people know what their credit score is approximately with Credit Karma and that type of thing. What type of credit score would they need to be able to investigate this no money down financing? Well, for a conventional, you probably will need about 720, which is doable for a lot of people. Um, and if you're going with the other no money down FHA, uh, you will need uh, 620, I understand, possibly 630. But still, that's, that's, a, that's a nice credit. Yeah, and that's one big advantage. You know, when people are going FHA, it's not so much credit score driven. So if you're 620, 640, some in, somewhere in that range, it is very possible to attain your home with zero money down, uh, no down payment at all. Now, there are closing costs, and I know, Jan, you're going to talk a little bit about that as well, because closing costs can be negotiable. You can negotiate for the seller to pay for those closing costs on behalf of your client. Can you talk a little bit about that? And is that customary for a first time buyer or lower end price range buyer? Is it normal for the seller to pay those closing costs? Well, actually, yes, you, you're absolutely right. You can have the seller pay them and it is very common. Um, but just to talk about what it actually costs at this point, you're looking at between two and 3% of the purchase price. So typically, let's say you're looking at a $250,000 home, which is probably a good starter home. That's what, between five and $7,000 in cash that you would need um, for the closing. Uh, if you could obviously get that seller to pay that for you, that would even be a, a, better, a better way to go. But uh, most people do have, you know, the difference between owning your home is, is between five and seven thousand dollars that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty big incentive to get going and, and and find a home absolutely and I know a lot of times of course the the homeowner the seller of the property they only care about what they net from the sale so rather than writing an offer at two hundred and forty five thousand maybe you write the offer at two hundred and fifty thousand and the seller pays the five thousand dollars worth of your closing costs meaning you really get in with no money out of pocket and that only increases your monthly payment by twenty dollars thirty dollars a month something to that tune um, is that pretty standard in your area as well that you would negotiate that in so the buyer can truly get in a home with no money down oh absolutely absolutely very good. And, and I know a big fear a lot of times if you're just starting to think about um, buying a home or maybe buying a home, but don't really have your heart set on it yet. A lot of buyers get nervous about having their credit pooled, right? So, you know, there's even commercials on TV. Oh my gosh, don't have your credit pooled. It's going to affect it negatively. Can you talk a little bit about the typical home buyer that's thinking of maybe buying but not really committed yet, is it wise to have their credit pooled and what kind of effect does that have positive or negative on their overall credit score? 
Well, thank you for asking. I've actually talked to five top lenders here in this county uh, just in the last couple of days, and all five of them agree. It's an urban legend. It's a myth. Um, pulling your credit is not going to affect your uh, credit scores by a point or two. And, you know, you certainly have um, a good 30 to 60 day window to pull your credit many times and it still will not affect you. The only exception to that was if you were had really bad credit in the first place and then you're applying for credit cards and loan, home, uh, car loans, things like that. Then, of course, maybe it would. And maybe that's where the myth came from. But for traditional people, and they're just uh, going to lenders to get their credit pulled, it will not affect your credit. Yeah, that's very good information. I know with you being a real estate agent yourself, um, you've worked with a lot of buyers that have that fear factor. I want to look around. I want to find what I want before I look at mortgages. And unfortunately, that can cost them a lot of money and some heartache. You know, they may choose the wrong type of mortgage. There is a lot of misconceptions out there. You know, the way the credit bureau works their algorithm, so to speak, is if you're shopping for mortgages and they see within that 30 or 60 day window that several companies have pulled it, it's not going to be like five points every time it's pulled. They realize you're just shopping for one mortgage. You're not trying to buy eight or 10 houses. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, um, for a lot of buyers, they're thinking, I need a mortgage. I know my bank where I have my checking and savings account. And I know Jennifer, who's the manager there, I'd like to go with them to get a mortgage. And I know that's one of the worst things they can do. Can you talk a little bit about why they should go with a real mortgage lender rather than the bank that they've established a relationship with over the last several years? Well, that's considered a real no-no uh, for people who really want to be um, have a smooth uh, purchase their first time out. They want to do it right. A lot of the people that they've been dealing with in the bank are totally unlicensed. Um, as helpful as they may be, they're really just not the right people to go to. They, they do a generic prequal, so they give you an idea about that perhaps is false. It's probably not even really where you stand credit-wise. And then once you have made your application, it goes off to a centralized underwriting uh, department that's not even anywhere probably in the state. Uh, and then you lose complete control over what's happening with your loan. And frequently you'll hear people complain that they had no idea, they had no communication, and they didn't even know 24 hours before their closing, they didn't even know if the loan was actually going to be funded or approved or whatever process they were in at that time. But it is really um, nerve wracking. And it's, a, it's uh, one of the worst mistakes you can make. Yeah, and, and I've always heard, I mean, everybody we've ever interviewed before said, you know, for that local marketplace, and I know you're in the West Palm Beach and surrounding cities, do what your realty advisor tells you to do. You know, you've got a real estate agent representing you because they've done hundreds of these transactions and they know where some of the hiccups can happen. And a lot of times, you know, the old school approach is mom used to be with state farm insurance so i'm going to go with state farm insurance mom used to be with abc bank so i'm going to go with abc bank it's just what you grew up with but the problem is when you get into mortgage lending much like you said the the branch manager at your bank probably isn't even a licensed loan officer um, let alone are they competitive they're banking on the fact that they have a relationship with you so they can charge a few thousand dollars more at times, that doesn't mean everybody does, but we have seen that a lot. So it always comes down to have a buyer's agent representative. Um, so Jan, I know you're with uh, Realty Home Advisors um, there in, in the Florida area. Can you talk a little bit about how long have you been a licensed agent? I know you've worked with a lot of buyers over the years. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, uh, what your production looks like? Well, actually, yes, I have. Um, I've been with Realty Home Advisors now for around four years, I believe. But um, um, but over, I've been in doing this for over eleven years now. So uh, time goes by, and lots and lots of buyers coming through. And right now, I think there's been a lot of um, lending restrictions have been lifted a lot. So there's a lot of people that can get into the market that previously couldn't. So it's an exciting time because there are a lot of people think they can't get credit or won't be able to buy the house that they really want. It's, pretty, it's a pretty good time to actually try and get in the market. 
Yeah, and I know having resources like you have available, I mean, let's point out that a home buyer, let's say they're around the West Palm Beach area or any of the surrounding cities, I know you've got a really big marketplace, but the typical home buyer can't just call on signs or go to Zillow and call on houses and get a good deal, uh, no money down financing. I mean, those are all available because you've done the legwork and found reputable lenders that do this consistently and do a great job for your clients. They're all happy once they get done with this. So I think that's one of the key factors is making sure you do have that representative and then letting yourself get out of your own way. So, you know, where people think I got to have a 720 credit score, I heard her say it's 720. For one type of mortgage, yes, but you can get an FHA mortgage, 620 to 640 credit score and very competitive rates. The keys here, it's not a subprime loan. You're not paying extra points and crazy interest rates. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, if they have less than perfect credit or maybe even they're self-employed, a lot of people are self-employed, can they still get a loan at competitive rates without going into that B paper or C paper, oftentimes called that subprime market? If they're, if they're self-employed or average credit, let's say, can they still be competitive when shopping for a mortgage? Oh, absolutely, especially now. Uh, they have new loans coming out literally all the time. One of the ones that comes uh, front and center is a, a bank statement program. All they're looking for is your bank statements. So you don't even have to use any pay stubs. Uh, so a lot of the, the typical things that you're expecting to have to provide, uh, they're not even gonna look at that. So, um, so, and there's some very creative lenders now out there, very legitimate, that can offer self-employed people some great, uh, great ways to get, get their dream home right away. Yeah, very good. And you know, I mean, sometimes again, getting in our own way, I'm just trying to think from a home buyer's perspective, obviously who's watching this, um, what are some of the reasons we may think I don't qualify? You know, I don't have perfect credit. I had a car repossessed four years ago. Uh, I had a bankruptcy four years ago, three years ago, all those things that come up, really what they're doing is they're stopping themselves from that American dream of home ownership, because the fact is a lot of those things aren't an issue now, enough time has passed. Let me ask you, if somebody had a bankruptcy um, two, three years ago, could they possibly get a home right now? Is that within reason? Yeah, absolutely. And, and furthermore, there's a lot of lenders out there would be ha absolutely, uh, they would be delighted to be able to s help set you up and get you Get, get you in position so that you can fast forward yourself so that you can get a loan. Uh, fix up, you know, pay off a few debts here and there. Uh, get, check out your credit scores and make sure they're not something on there that's not legitimate. Um, and just get, basically pace you so that you can possibly just put yourself, if you, don't, if you don't qualify this minute, a couple of months down the road, three months down the road, you're ready to go. So there, there are people out there that will be delighted to help. Yeah, and I've always heard, you know, if you're at least 24 months out of bankruptcy, it's worth investigating. You got to be two years, 24 months out. But once you're 24 months out, it's absolutely worth investigating to find out, first of all, can I get a property right now? And if not, what do I need to do to get ready for that? So much like Jan said here, um, you know, do I need two months, four months, six months of preparation so that I can get into that home ownership, stop wasting our money on rent or wasting money on a, a house that you no longer want to live in, no longer fits your needs, there's better opportunities out there. So um, again, I think a lot of times it's our own mindset that causes us to drag our feet. Maybe it's not really money down. Maybe you really need perfect credit. Uh, maybe my car repossession from five years ago is going to be an issue. All of these things that we have come in our mind, but look, from a positive motivational side of the, that dream of home ownership, what do you have to lose by calling? You know, get a local advisor, get a real estate agent to help you out. They'll represent you totally free. They get paid from the proceeds of sale. So they'll help you out with saying, okay, tell me about your situation so I can get you in front of the best type of lender for your individual needs. 
Um, Jan, I know that's one thing that you've always um, kind of prided yourself in is finding out about their situation and then getting into the, the old school term would be the Rolodex. We used to have a real Rolodex on our desk here. Here's the best lender for your needs. Let's investigate it and see if they have a specific mortgage program that will help with your individual situation. Can you talk a little bit about that and the representation you provide for the buyers you work with? Well, I've sourced some excellent lenders and, and I keep doing that all the time, like weeding a garden. Uh, as they come out with better ones, I, I replace them with, with newer ones that I think are, are more effective or give my clients the best they could possibly find. Um, and I think that's a, an enormous tool. Uh, we can just go straight into who are the best people to pick. Let's go with these right now and find out what we can do. We can actually get a, a price for how much they could afford. And we could literally in 24 hours, we could be out looking at, at properties that they could literally be moving into next month. So just having the right people and being able to put it all together really quickly without any missteps is, is awesome. And, you know, I've always heard from any of the home buyers we've interviewed that they put it off, they were dragging their feet, they wait another year, wait another six months. But once they finally did it, they said, man, it was so much easier than we thought. And they couldn't be prouder that they finally got out of their own way and did what's best for their family. Now they have that pride of home ownership. So for anyone watching, I would encourage you to... Um, get out of your own way and allow success to happen for your family. Allow yourself to investigate this, see if it makes sense, see if it all lines up. Um, again, if you're looking at no money down or a very small down payment, however you wanna set this up, get a local advisor to help you out that specializes in this and can give you the best advice for your individual needs. Jan, let me ask you if, if uh, anybody watching is from the uh, Palm Beach area or surrounding cities, I know you work a huge marketplace, how can they reach out to you uh, for a conversation and can they get that information totally free with no obligation? Absolutely, um, call me, text me, whatever you're comfortable with um, at 561-846-1863. And um, there, it's absolutely no obligation. It's just um, fact finding and finding out actually how much, how much it's gonna actually cost you, which is probably going to come as a great surprise that you could get a home with so little um, out of your own pocket. Absolutely. And then, you know, every year come tax time, I know the, the new home buyers are pretty excited because they're getting a good tax return. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to home ownership that way. Yeah, there's tax. And, and a lot of people are actually, uh, a lot of people I meet are just literally paying month to month. And they're just paying someone else's mortgage when they could be paying their own and um, develop their own equity. And also there's the tax benefits too, which we just said. So there really isn't a reason uh, not to just go ahead, go forward and get that dream home. Very good. Well, I appreciate all the info. I just wrote your phone number down, uh, wrote your phone number down here. So it's Jan Flowers with Realty Home Advisors. Phone number uh, for call or text 561-846-1863. So you want to write that down or pick up your phone right now and shoot her a text. Again, 561-846-1863. 1863. Jan, thanks so much for uh, giving us some good information here today. Oh, thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for everybody watching as well. Uh, give Jan a call. I, if you are in that area, I think you'll find that it's an incredibly valuable to have somebody help you along with the home purchase process. And we'll plan on talking to you soon. Bye-bye for now.